okay, I, I suddenly feel that Riga is a, is a door, Riga is ein Dorf. Because uh, what Roland uh, was talking, it really feels like he's talking about what I'm also going to tell you, and it really refers also to what we have had an experience. So, um, my vision is, uh, is to have uh, all the empty spaces that are in the city, and any city, to be free space for creativity, for culture, for social use. This is my big vision. And um, I, I'm working with Free Riga. Obviously, free is, is part of the word there. Um, and that's a culture, Riga, where free means, you know, quite different maybe thing than, than here, because in, in, in more neoliberal countries, nothing is for free. And it's uh, quite a statement. So I've been working with this collective for three years, trying to open the empty spaces for, for free use. And at the same time, uh, already now, like for eight or nine years, I've been working also with municipalities, with cities, with engagement, with public participation, with all the topics that we are also discussing as a part, because space needs to be filled. So, and um, some of my examples also were, were, will be uh, um, not just Riga examples, but as I'm part of a project, which is Ghent, Bremen, Zwischenzeit Zentrale, uh, uh, Amersfoort, Athens, Nantes, Riga and these cities working together on the topic of Leerstand and what to do with Leerstand, as a, how to open it. So some of these examples possibly will be also from, from that project. Um, two things, two things that I, I, I've understood in my work and in, in, from the context of Riga that you really need. One is you cannot solve something that is not visible something that is not talked about, something that is not fought about, something not, that is not difficult. Only the things that are somehow brought and, you know, it's unpleasant, like there's one point with, with Roland, that, you know, although it is maybe you don't want to talk about it, if it's not talked about, it cannot be solved. And then it's, it's a, you know, it's a painful issue. It cannot be not painful if it's, if it's going to be solved because people don't want to do it anyway, anything, if it's not... Uh, somehow related to them. So visibility, how to make it visible. And the other issue is, uh, okay, we have started something. There are lots of maybe, or some initiatives, but how to make these new initiatives that are working with the empty spaces a normality? How to make normality out of few good projects, you know, that not only um, three or four places can be made alive, but 20, 100, 70%, 80% of the places can be made alive. And uh, regarding the normality, uh, temporary use, which is what we are working in Riga as the first step, using temporarily these empty buildings, this was not normality, not at all. Um, Riga, before the crisis, uh, b before 2008, was the fastest growing capital in European Union. And it was very proud of that. It was very proud of uh, that the fact that cities in, to in a total property bubble, a credit-driven uh, cre bubble which was ever-expanding, ever-growing, more and more skyscrapers at uh, both sides of, uh, of the Daugava River. Um, and uh, although the city was still, the, the, the city was st still shrinking actually, it had lost, uh, so Riga is approximately now 700,000 inhabitants, it used to be nearly a million. So in, in 20 years, since 90s, it had, has lost a very big number of population. But whatsoever, Riga was still having this ambition, and, and it is an ambition of the city to grow. Um, so using something of a, of a spaces that are empty and that are waiting for the big money to come after the crisis. You know, crisis came and all these big plans about the development, they were gone. Uh, and, and now many spaces are just waiting, and there are approximately 1,000 spaces that we know of that are empty in Riga. So all these spaces are waiting and it's totally not normal to do something with them because uh, owners understand the language of money and of uh, perhaps new investors coming, but they don't understand the language of creativity, of social use, of anything else. Um, so the empty buildings. And uh, when, when being in the city, uh, it seemed that every fifth building is empty. It was a, co a phrase coined by one corrupt politician, but still, it was the feeling. 
And the context for all of this uh, free Riga movement was that Riga was becoming cultural capital of Europe in 2014. So it was 2013 when this idea started. Just people seeing all these beautiful buildings which are decaying and the same as here. Not, nothing is happening there and you cannot seem to get access to, to these buildings. No transparency in that sense. Um, and the big question was, okay, we are some people uh, uh, in, a, in a loose group of maybe 20 people who were meeting in a, such a conference like this. We are people who have tried to do something with the empty spaces. This is big uh, type of Siemens of Latvia, VEF, it's called factory. Uh, one building of it which was taken by uh, this guy named Kaspars, also one of the founders of Free Riga. But it was all like, please give us space. There is this empty space. Please give us space. How can we get it? You know, it, it was this feeling that we had that we cannot get it, and if we get it, then it's really through, um, you know, have to pay much for a space which is actually not very good, and so on. So, and on one side, Riga 2014 cultural capital. So many new projects looking for space and not having the space. On the other hand, so much of empty space, which somehow seems inaccessible. So, maybe European capital of empty buildings. That was the question that we asked. Um, unpleasant question. It was really unpleasant. I remember we talked, kind of, do we really say it like that, you know? Do we say something so negative? Because I think Latvians want to be the good guys. Um, we as a culture, we tend to be quite polite. Um, and then the next, next step after this uh, small idea, capital of empty spaces, in August of uh, 2013 was, okay, there is a survival kit festival coming and one, uh, one woman who was of this group of ours talking about this, she just printed 5,000 such stickers, Occupy Me stickers, like this, this size. They're really rare, they're in museums I think now. Uh, couldn't bring any here. Um, but um, she printed 5,000 Occupy Me stickers because her uh, festival survival kit, contemporary arts festival was about topic slow revolutions, Arab Spring, Occupy movement, so mm, Occupy. Okay, let's occupy somehow something, not knowing still what. So there was a problem of 5,000 stickers and around this problem suddenly people gathered and said, okay, let's, let's, stick, let's, let's put them on the buildings, you know, wh wh where else, on the empty buildings? And um, this action suddenly became an uh, overnight huge sensation. And in Facebook it was shared like to hundreds, thousands of people. Uh, we had actually did done something which was um, smart, I guess. We had uh, made a manifesto telling that how comes that so beautiful spaces are empty and at the same time so many people are looking for space for, for their good projects. And we had placed these manifestos along with the stickers in all kind of creative places of Riga. So where the people are who actually might understand this idea. And we had made the first, uh, like night before, uh, publishing the manifesto, we had made little action ourselves, going around and maybe sticking the stickers on, on 100 buildings. So suddenly it was in all the news. Suddenly it was like, everybody is like saying, yes, it is really that every fifth space is empty. I, I said it so, I, I also think so. And it was quite a surprise because we hadn't thought, like we had thought just 5,000 stickers and what to do with them, basically. It was a coincidence. Um, then a map was launched uh, by another person from this initial 20 people's group um, where, like Ljerstan Smerda, maybe you know, where to map the empty buildings uh, and somehow make them visu visible on, not only in the, in the city uh, where 5,000 stickers had gone, were gone like in, in one day, but also somehow on the internet so that, you know, you see the totality of it. And then suddenly it, 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 we found out by starting to organize events that there is such a demand for the space. Okay, we knew about ourselves. We knew that we had the projects, the culture, and so on. But there were many people coming to these events and saying, yes, I want to do this project. I want to take care of a house. I want to do action, arts action. I want to do a concert. And suddenly this demand, which is, I bet it is here. I bet it is here in this city. I talked with some people, and although maybe, um, maybe it seems that, yeah, a little city, who would use such a space? if this was announced to be a Occupy Me space, a free space. And by the way, Occupy Me uh, in, in our culture is quite a provocation because, you know, we were occupied 50 years, Latvia. So it was something to really, that people care about occupying and free space as, as such. 
if you announced uh, that you have space here, just come. I already talked with some people, they would move here to this space. So there is always demand, and we discovered that too, that where these workshops being started done. This is Janine Walter, maybe somebody knows her. She also works in Riga from, from Berlin. Um, talking with municipality, being in the press. So everybody started to talk about this unpleasant topic, but it was uh, um, a surprise that everybody was saying, yes, something must be done, because we had expected that the big banks and private owners who mostly uh, own these buildings, they will say no, you know, no, it's our building because private property rights are very strong in Latvia. So maps made, and um, well, to, to sum it up uh, for, for this first visibility part, there are all kind of ways how to bring up this unpleasant topic and how to show it. We were grassroots action. We really chose to do, do very impolite things, like to invite people to occupy me, uh, occupy buildings in a culture where you know private property is sacred. But I think such, uh, such provocation, it's necessary to, to at all get somewhere because if the market doesn't work, you have to you know, really get all the energy that is there and get all the ideas possible and allow people somehow to act outside of the law, perhaps, to solve it. Um, there are all kinds of maps to, to do. There are Amersfoort with urban agriculture where it's providing the, the topic of agriculture as a, as a you know, exchange topic. Uh, to match the initiatives which are in places and people. There's Leerstans uh, Meda, uh, there's using open data to open maybe municipal properties so that they're visible somehow and people can say, hey, I want to use this property. There are, like we did and like Athens did, some kind of workshops, workshops going around and, and mapping buildings. Um, but it takes visibility. So uh, out of that action, first project was started, prototyping trying out um, without any contracts, without anything. Um, people really coming to help. Um, many such people. You know, this yard actually, it was totally not used by anybody, you know. It was like this. Uh, but after first initiative, Cultural Academy students went in uh, and started making some events. Not only neighbors came, um, I think those two kids on the right, they are from across the city, they came to their friends to just hang around in this new uh, cool place of, uh, of, you know, nice vintage colors and so on. Um, but, you know, like visibility is one step. Okay, make it visible, make, make it provocative, really. Be, be daring, but how to make it a normality? You know, okay, we had this one project, but how to, how to make it so that it has influence on the thousand buildings that are empty in Riga? Um, and the question of normality, we have such ingredients, uh, I guess, your, uh, this, place to, uh, this place has a different ingredients, but still, maybe there's something to learn. We understood that, first of all, uh, we have to define, as it's private property, we, define, we have to define it as a service. They are actually, uh, it's a scheme adopted from Basel, you know, it's li life cycle of a building. Basically, building used, all good, building not used, it, it brings costs uh, and waits for the next uh, development, or it, it goes down and crashes. You know, and we, we define that it's a service in this meantime. We are helping to Hauswechter, to guard the building and to maintain it and maybe to improve it and bring a value to it. Um, but it is very important so that owners would understand you know, what we want. And this is part of the question, you know, who is owning that and what do they need? Um, the second uh, step was uh, setting up Free Riga as a, you know, this crazy anarchic a bit collective. It's gone into m being more in an agency, you know, connecting the owners and talking with the owners in the city um, and talking with the creative people who want to do something and making it visible that there are, currently we have 280 applications for space. Nobody would have thought that in Riga there is so much uh, need for that. Really, no, it's not visible otherwise. Um, so. And this is necessary because also, you know, owners have to understand that they are getting a service and, and that these people, creative people are helping them to, uh, to revitalize the place. And it's important. It's not just that they, oh, we give you f uh, for, for little rent this place and, and then we kick you out. You know, it has to be seen as a service, not, not that both sides are exploiting each other. Um, so therefore, we as an agency try to do it. Um, then tax reductions. This is a big topic in Riga uh, and in Latvia in general. From 2013, municipalities can uh, introduce differentiated tax rates. You know, for average properties, 1% of the cadastral value, but if the property is degraded, 
municipality can say that 3% for this property uh, as the tax. Or if the property is used by social uh, public benefit organizations, which I know you also have such, such a status in, in Germany for NGOs, public benefit, then it's 90% uh, it's tax reduction, actually, for this, this tax. So you can have really a big reduction if you are opening your space for temporary use by creative and, and social organizations. That's another uh, kind of ingredient in our recipe. And then the fourth ingredient, commons. As I said, market doesn't work. People have to feel that it's their space somehow, and we try to uh, open these spaces, at least while they're empty, that they are free and that they can be used for socially marginalized groups, so commons use. Everybody who uses it owns it. That it's, uh, it's for, um, for sharing or con consuming less because probably we'll have to cut down on the consumption as a society, so we have to already learn it maybe, and that it's freely accessible. Now we have uh, already a few projects with uh, normality in it, um, like Zunda Garden, this big hangar as an as a event space uh, for the second year now. Um, uh, this uh, Pushkin Street uh, office building becoming a creative workshop and uh, all kinds of organizations are working there. Atopi Basel Collective was visiting us for the opening. Um, so, and, uh, and many more owners, because of these tax reductions, are actually very interested to cooperate with us. So now we are at the moment where this small idea that started as a provocation, as a totally, you know, impolite thing to do, it, it hit the right nerve in the society uh, that we need the spaces, we have the spaces and we can do something about them. Uh, and now it's getting to be uh, a thing that is considered by city council how to promote it already as a normal service for, for the owners. I bet you have... Um, I bet you have a different recipe, but uh, I would dare to say that uh, experimenting with announcing that everything that is empty can be freely used might be part of the recipe at least to see what are the local people thinking and what do they want and what would they do with the space. And that wouldn't hurt anybody if the spaces would be used and maintained. Thank you.